Welcome, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What is it? Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Still in the morning. Okay. It's always a pleasure to be here with all of you, um, learning with us, continue with the lessons. Again, as you can see, there's a lot of information that we need to have in order for us to be successful as human beings living in this world. Um, you know, we go through a lot, um, and one of the subjects today we're going to cover is why do bad things happen to good people? And then, you know, I think that's a question everybody wants to know, Jerry. Well, you know, I've been watching on the news in this holiday season. There's that blast of uh, freezing air and a lot of snow. And actually, according to what I heard this morning, quite a few people have died, even in their cars. And uh, part of what I mentioned is that, uh, you know, we're not prepared. We go out and we don't think about what we need. And people died in their cars because it was frozen. They were stuck in the snow on the freeway. And also some of the information, like what, that's part of our message. We're not getting enough information. And then we think we're uh, uh, indestructible. Oh, I'll make it. It'll be okay. And they're not, they don't have enough gas. They don't have enough blankets. They don't have, and we lost a lot of people in the last couple of days during the Christmas holiday. Now, isn't that a shame? Wow, that is awesome point. And it's true what Joe said, we're not prepared. We're not prepared in this world, and we certainly are not prepared for the next world. And this is what the purpose of this program is for, these lessons are for, is to prepare us for both, for this world and for the next world. To now, come you say here. next world, that's it. I mean, people don't know what to expect. What is the next world? Is there a next world? Is there planes? Is there level? Do we just go to heaven? Do we go to hell? Is there a purgatory? Oh, no, can't say purgatory. That's not in the Bible. But there's levels of, uh, well, we don't know what happens to us. Do we come back? Reincarnation. A lot of people believe that. And that's just a good possibility as anything you can think of. Well, you know, the beauty of it is in there's so many questions. That's like Joe saying. There's so many questions. And we do have the answer. I don't have all of it. Again, like I said, it's not my answer. Well, nobody it has it right. So the Torah does give us some right. understanding of Very the possibility yes. of the reason behind certain things. Does that make sense? And yes, it, it does, does give us some understanding reason behind certain things. And it also give us also the real reason as well. So it gives us both. So it doesn't leave us hanging, wondering what's going on in our lives. And that's what this program is about. Again, to educate us, ourselves as parents, to be able to educate our children. Because we as parents, if you are a parent watching this, or you know someone who is a parent, We've made mistakes. Oh, absolutely. We've made mistakes for ourselves, and we certainly made mistakes trying to raise our own children, you know, because why? We're not giving the instruction. And because I like to always use, excuse me, Victor, mm -hmm. interrupt you. I always like to use that saying. I know I say it, it's redundant, but, you know, you make your bed, you lie in it. I mean, we wind up doing things, and we don't even realize what we're doing. We don't, like Victor's saying, you, we don't have the right education, and then we even ignore it. And then, well, I'll go ahead and smoke, and in 40 years down the line, Oh, why do I have cancer? They didn't tell me that there was cancer in the cigarettes. Yes. You see, again, we are ill-informed. Or if we are, or they, if they do give us information, it's incomplete information. Yeah, we're right. Information. In hiding. In hiding. Yes. Oh, I'm going to put out the cigarettes. What and what we say, brainwash. Brain, yeah, oh, absolutely. Massive brainwash. Massive That's brainwash. what it is. Because if you look at our culture, if you look at society, and the United States is supposed to be the richest, most powerful country in the world. But yet, look who we have elect. And not to go into politics, but to show that this is the type of people that we elect to be our leaders. That's a reflection on you and I. That's what it's saying to the whole world. This is what we believe in. This is the type of people that we want to be leaders. And everybody know, you know what the leader is, what the, what's going on. But it's not to talk about it. It's, again, because why... Why did we vote for somebody like that? Well, you know what? I Why would we vote for somebody like that? I have to go to one other direction because mm -hmm. I have to sell my product mm -hmm. here. You buy this little potion, Victor. This will cure everything. This only costs $10. And if you buy two, it'll cost you $50. Wait a minute. That's not right. There's no deal there. But what I'm saying here is I'm going to sell you a product that will cure everything. There's part of the brainwash. Beautiful. I, I went to another subject. You're no, no, you're right. Brain. You are right. Exactly. That's what they tell you. They don't tell you the downside of any product. We were talking about that the other day. Nine so ninety nine. It's always telling you the good side of the product. And that's what people do. Right. It doesn't matter what information they're selling. They're always going to try to sell the good side and hide the bad. 
and we're oh. gullible. We're gonna go, whoa, a potion. Yeah, you know this guy. This guy is right. He's a scientist. And why are we gullible? Cheat? We're gullible. Well, I, we gullible because we did not learn. Learn. Yeah. We did not learn. It is our fault that we did not learn. But we, but we willing to sit in front of TV for hours watching these ridiculous shows that's brainwashing us, brainwashing our children, and then we're wondering why we make mistakes. We're wondering why we can't have the life that we want. We're wondering why we have this problem we can't solve it. And then we go to people who have no idea as well to help us solve something they themselves have. Right. They can't solve. Exactly. We go to therapists and they have marital problems and they can't solve their own problem. Exactly. Good point. You Absolutely. See? So you go to people who's trying to help you. I know someone, honestly, that is a therapist that does help other people. But her herself, she's been through dif difficult marriages. She's single. She can't find someone. And honestly, I've spoken to people. They still don't know how to find the right soulmate or the right person. They still lost themselves. So they're feeding you ideology or their idea, or their perception of what is good. Again, there's two sides. There's your side and there's God. Right. Yes. There's only two right. sides, yours and God, and who you think is going to be right and who's going to be wrong. Right there, you already know if it's your side or somebody else's side, they already, by default, they are wrong. If you are not following God's blueprint, you're wrong. You're never going to get it right because why? He's the designer. Just like when you buy a brand new car, there's a manual. If you do opposite of what the manual says to do, what's going to happen, Joe? Yeah, you're going to ruin the car. You're going to ruin the car. I just what? saw something on uh, YouTube. There you go. Well, this guy was explaining the octane. You know, there's uh, 87, 89, and 93 and different octanes. And you think... If your car in your uh, manufacturer tells you what gasoline to use, what octane, but you think, you know, mine may need 87 octane, but 93 is better. You're just assuming. So we have the wrong information, and then we want to do better, and we're doing worse for ourselves. Be yes, yeah. beautiful. You know what? What Joe is saying is this. We are using human logic. Human logic has been flawed since the moment of creation because... Think about it. We've been degenerating. We've been falling, getting worse and, and worse. worse and we worse. haven't been getting better. We've been getting worse. Why? Because of our logic. Our logic. We're going against God. We have God, logic, or wisdom, and we have our logic. We're falling away from God. We're, we're not paying attention. We're going with our logic, and our logic is flawed, and we will always, always lose. You will always have the end of the stick. Your life will never be what you want it to be. It doesn't matter what you think you know, because if you don't know these things we're talking to you about, then obviously you don't know much. Right. And if you don't know much, that means even me, I'm considered the information that I have is like I having an ant. It's comparing an ant to the people who have who possess this amount of information. And we're always so learning. We're always I'm, learning. I'm always learning. Exactly. Learn. Because of this learning, my life has transformed, and also Joe been learning too. His life been transforming. Our life can only change based on the right information. Oh, very good, yes. That's the only way your life is going right. to change, if you have the right information. If you have flawed information, do you think your life is going to change? It will never change, neither will your kids, neither your grandchildren, great-grandchildren, because why? You're passing flawed information from one generation to the next to the next, and guess what? Everybody will be failures. Look at the stock market. I mean, you know, oh, we're going to buy this stock. Oh, I heard, Victor, somebody told me to buy this here... Uh new product that's out. I heard about it. Let's put our money into it. Well, no research. We got to do our own research. Exactly. And then you know what? And if you are learning and you are following us and you continue following the new posts, the new lessons, and you're listening again, you can listen while you're in the kitchen, you are going driving to work, coming home from work, going to the store, just push play and listen. Again, it's not the one time you listen to this and you have the whole information. It's going to take time, ladies and gentlemen, because there's a lot of information that you need to digest to understand and put into perspective for it to make sense. It's and like, don't take our word. I mean, do your own research. You heard something we say, do your own research. Then you'll say, okay, now I understand. Yes. So like two guys told me, I saw these guys on YouTube. Do your own research, and then you'll see where you got to go. And, you know, again, that is true. Again, now, again, a lot of stuff on the Internet as well is also flawed, incorrect, because it's being manipulated. Just like, again, you have to be careful who you are listening to, okay? You know this is true because why is God wisdom? It's not my knowledge. I didn't say this is what I think. Right, right Joe doesn't right. say this is what he right, thinks. Right. 
We're telling you where this is coming from. God, the Torah. It's not my opinion. It's not your opinion. So again, you need to decide who you're going to listen to. Your friends, your neighbors who have failure, who fail in their relationship or whatever it is, their life is a failure, or you want to listen to God and then not follow their way and then follow the way God designed it to be and become success. And you can't give five minutes to yourself or to God just to maybe pray, meditate, oh, or wow. read. Well, you, you can't read one paragraph? That is absolutely beautiful. Think about it. Five minutes to God to learn so you can. And that five minutes is not really to God. You're giving that five minutes to you. Right. Because Ooh, yes. you're the one who's benefiting right. from it. Not God. God is not benefiting from anything you do. And you yeah. might have to read it one, two, three, or well, more than one time. Yes. And understand, some of the words are difficult. Or maybe the way they're phrased. What does this mean? Ask other people. Get your opinion. But do your own. Like we said, read. But you know what RJ says? You got to study. Yes. You have you to gotta study. study. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to these videos over and over again. Again, talk about it with your family, with your friends, with whoever, because this is the way that you will retain. Also, when I learn, I apply what I learn. I don't go. just I don't just read it or listen to it or read the information. I do it, well, and see, I look for it. You know, that's why in high school, I didn't do any of the studying. I did reading, but I didn't do any studying, and that's why I came out of high school as an idiot. Well, and I'm not too far away from that, but I learned a little bit here. Well, whatever Joey's saying, well, he made up for it because for the last 30 years, he's been studying. This is why he's sitting here. We're teaching you because guess what? He has learned, and he has applied it, and I see him apply the stuff he has learned, and that's the key to remembering information Apply what Apply you want. Apply it, yes. Apply it. You hear it, do it. Yes. That's why the Torah, the Old Testament, is called instruction. When you're giving people instruction, you expect them to apply it. That's what it is. It's instruction. That's what God is saying. I'm giving you instruction. I expect you to apply it. It's for your benefit, not me. Well, when you were a teacher in school, you were up there uh, teaching the children but then you give them a study lesson. You didn't say, that's it. Don't go home and study. Study what I told you. Here's a test. Here's study. It's beautiful. What's the purpose of homework? You're applying. Homework. You're yeah. applying what you learn in a classroom. Well, I didn't do much of that in high You're school. applying. You can You're tell how I speak. But that's okay. <laughs> but you know what? Again, we all have our uh, weakness and right. strength. Everybody's different. No two people are alike. So again... Everybody has their weakness and strength. You have to be able to recognize you, what your strength is, what your weakness is. And Thank then we you, work Victor. on that. And you know what? Working with um, Joe, God has put us together to be able to do these videos. And Joe's bringing up some awesome questions. You are inspiring, Victor. You well, inspire me. Joe, you inspire other people who listen to this as well because you're asking questions on their behalf. Thank you. Know, you to yes. open their eyes. Yes. You yes. know, And when you say things, you expand it where you give them more information for them to understand what the subject is all about. Okay, so again, this is what it's all about. Now, let's get to it. Why bad things happen? There's a couple of reasons bad things happen to good people. One is God is trying to get your attention. Okay, that's one way. For example, let's say your son is across the street, okay, and you're trying to get his attention, but you don't want to yell out his name, okay, but he's in danger. How else would you get, how are you going to get his, get, his, um, get his attention? Now, you have an option of picking a rock and throwing and hitting him, but you know it's going to cause him pain. Wow. But at the same time, by you getting his attention, by hitting him with that rock to get his attention and warn him that someone is coming to kill him. But you Ooh, can't call. I like that analogy. You see? But I'm warning you by hitting you with that rock. That rock caused you pain. But what's the end result? I just saved your life through that pain. Wow, I like how you say that. You see I that? I didn't realize pain. Oh, why, God, why does this happen to me? I got a flat tire or whatever, a little pain. Yes. It's the long message. It's the message. There is something behind that pain that's there, God, trying to get your attention to help you and save your life or for you to grow to the next level. And some of it is devastating, some of that pain. Yes, because it depends what it is that you do. Remember, pain is caused by sin. That's where pain comes from. We sin. Meaning that we went against God and now we're suffering the consequences because we went against God. Means that, for example, when you have, we talk about this, you have children. If you tell your child, don't touch the stove when it's hot oh, and he yeah. decides not to listen and he touched the stove, what happened? Pain. You got to see, you got to touch the stove because it's red hot. Now, is it 
your fault as a parent is in pain or is it his fault? Yeah. Did you not warn him as a parent? Didn't listen. He just didn't want to listen. We don't listen. Exactly. So we don't listen and therefore we bring pain upon ourselves because we are not listening. We have to learn by experience and that makes us uh, double pain. And the next one we're going to talk about is growth. So a lot of times too is when we go to the gym, we, I, Joe, you heard that expression, no pain, no gain. Right, yes. Right? right? No <laughs> pain, no gain. If you exercise, you heard that before. If you've been to the gym, you heard that before. Meaning that if you want growth, there has to be pain. Right. If there's no pain, there's not going to be any growth. You may just be idling. So you're not going to go to the gym and you're lifting 10 pounds for the first two weeks. And in the next six weeks, you're still lifting 10 pounds. Next six months, you're still lifting 10 pounds. Next year, you're still lifting 10 pounds. Is there any growth? No, you got to graduate. And then that graduate may make the weight heavier. Now, now you got to watch about out. pain. Pain can be mm -hmm. uh, a warning of, you know, don't do this. You're using too much. Mm -hmm. It's I think we're more talking about uncomfortable. You get up and go to the gym. You got to get dressed. You got to lift up. And that's I a don't want to do that. I'm lazy. I'm tired. So it's that uncomfortable which makes you uncomfortable to get you to move in a different direction. Yes. Because, you know, the seat gets too hot. What are you going to do? You're going to get up. If the chair gets too hot, you're going to get up. Why, find out why is this getting hot? Yes, right. You see, so when pain comes into our lives and the seat gets hot, I'm going to stand up, find out why is it getting hot so I can fix it. So God used pain as well as a form of growth to get you to the next level because why he knows you're capable. He knows you're capable of being more. We're going to get into that more. Well, you know, there's some people, and this is another subject, mm -hmm. I mean, they like pain. For whatever reason. I mean, it's, again, another subject that's maybe it went into, you got to talk about a psychiatrist about that. And let's look at this. I don't here. even know why I brought that up. But but that's true. That's true. we got to realize pain and then make the adjustment. Because pain is a warning sign. Something is wrong. We need to pay attention to it. We need to find out what it is. And we need to correct it. That's what pain is telling us. You know, I saw that on Seinfeld where George had this wallet. Well, his back was hurting. He couldn't figure out what it was. And then Jerry said, well, you, why are you sitting like that? He said, well, my wallet. His wallet was this thick. And that's why his back was hurting him. I don't know. Where... No, you're <laughs> Another, right. Another uh, analogy. But it wasn't... Jerry said, well, you got to take that wallet out and put it somewhere in his front pocket. And his pain went away. I mean, as simple as he that. He just said, what he just said is that he found out what was causing the pain or someone like this and teaching. Just to it. The teaching we're doing now is teaching you what the pain is, where it is, and what you should do about it. How to fix it. Like you just said in this story in Seinfeld, Seinfeld was giving them information how to correct the pain. And most of the pain comes from our stupidity. Not knowing that yeah, is correct. Right. Stupidity means this. You had a choice to learn, but you choose not to. That's a choice. You made a choice to be stupid. Overeating. Yeah. You're so, oh, why is my, oh, my stomach See? hurts. Oh, I can't go to the bathroom. Oh, is this? Why? You overate? If you don't know, you opt out. You didn't want to learn, so that's why you don't know. And therefore, God says you will be punished for making your own self stupid because you chose not to learn. You chose not to. So that's much what cancer. Saying. What's involved with cancer? I don't want to go back to smoking. Anything. Any drugs. Any alcohol. I mean... There's some drugs that we have to take that our doctors uh, tell us. But a lot of people, I got a friend of mine, doctor told him, you know, take this drug. So I asked him, I said, uh, are you still drinking alcohol? Because he's, well, he's an alcoholic. You know, he was drinking with the medicine. I go, well, you can't drink that alcohol and take medicine. And you know what he said to me? Doctor didn't tell me that. Do you have to know that you don't take alcohol with drugs? And that's him, that's common knowledge. You see that even in the movies. You see people uh, overdose alcohol and right and yeah. uh, medication. So again, you know, the question is, where has our brain gone? It's like we lost our brain, ladies and gentlemen. In the toilet. Yeah, there you go. It yeah. has to be. Right. Because if we don't understand these simple principles, something is wrong. And how can you ex expect your life to improve? Your life can only improve if you have the right information. Oh, but it feels so good to smoke, to take this drug. Oh, I like that high. But don't forget, like Joe says, but there's going to be a consequences. That's Consequent. why outlast that pleasure, that moment of pleasure. The consequences will be years compared to five, ten minutes of pleasure. Pleasure. 
I think that's right. a sin. Isn't that a sin? What? The way it's applied, Whoa. yes. Oh, the way it's applied. The yeah. way you use it, yes. <laughs> now, it says is when a parent um, discipline a child, is it a bad thing or is it a good thing? Oh, you got to discipline. But is it a bad thing or a good thing? Good thing. Now, in the receiver eyes, which is the child, it looks like a bad thing. But in the parents, the, but the parents know it's not bad. It's good for him because I'm correcting him. We you got to watch how that, what are we talking about? Uh, discipline, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got to see how, how, I mean, you know, over beating or... Uh, not out of anger. Uh, right, not, right. You do not hit, and again, you're supposed to beat your child, but you don't hit them out of anger. Not beat, maybe a little spank. Yeah, but not out of anger. Remember, right. King Solo, I mean, King David's son tried to kill him. And the Torah said, the Bible said, because he did not discipline him. Yes, you got to That's why discipline. his son tried to kill him. When you decide not to discipline your child, not to teach your child, do not be surprised when they want to murder you. If I'm driving yeah. down the street and uh, I'm going over the speed limit and I get stopped and the cop says, well, you know what? Be careful next time. You know, well, I can get away with this. I like that thrill of speeding. And what happens next time? I kill somebody or myself. Yes. Where's the discipline? There you go. Well, the discipline will be many years in prison. Yeah, there you go. But they didn't have to go there. No. You see, that's the whole point. Do not wait until you fall into the pit. Learn to avoid the pit. Avoid the problem by learning. If you learn, you will learn to avoid the misery, the pain, and the suffering you bring up on yourself. And once you learn, you got to teach. Teach your, well, it doesn't have to be your children, but teach your children. They're the most vulnerable and they need more education about what we're talking about. But anybody, it could be anybody. It could be your friend, your mother, your sister, your brother. Anybody could be taught if you see that the action is not being correct. And you know, this is, it's said in the Torah, this is the most degenerate um, lack of understanding, stupidity, ignorant people ever exist in the face of the, in the history of the planet. I see that. We see this that. generation right. is the worst of all. So what does that mean for you and your child or your children Nobody's if you're being not teaching taught. them? Yeah, the teaching. Meaning that they're going to suffer. Lack of teaching is going to lead to suffer. That's the bottom line, ladies and gentlemen. Pain, suffering, and misery because they don't know. Oh, we got to have suffer. a chalkboard. Oh, no, an easel that Michael said. Mm -hmm. Remember Mike said get an easel? You write down teaching, write down so we see it visually. I'm a visual, I gotta see things visually almost every day. Because you forget about it. Yeah, some people need that. Some people need a visual, and that is true. So again, you have to use whatever works for you to remember how to teach or to remind your own self and your children as well. Now the next thing says, look at your past. Look at your past. That's another reason why that you you're suffering, because something you might have done in the past. And you forgot about it, that needs to be fixed. Like if you see a child with a deficiency, something they're doing all the time, they're always doing it. That's of course they did it already it's in the past. Are you gonna just sit there and not address it? So God says you keep doing something or you've done something that needs to be addressed. So therefore, he that's where this also could be coming from because something that was done or you still doing that's in the past, that's affecting what's happening to you now. Okay, so it says. Change is to change the direction that you're going on. When God brings these suffering, is meaning that, hey, you're going the wrong way. Turn around. Go this way. That's what God is trying to do. Get Didn't your a friend of ours, we saw on the internet, that we, she wrote, uh, she was very uh, upset about the way her life was going. And all of a sudden, she's on the swing and she got a concussion. I guess she's fell or whatever. And at first for... She was upset about it. Then she realized maybe it was God giving her a sign. I mean, that sounds kind of like bizarre, but that's what I think we're talking about. And that's exactly, that's the conclusion she came up with. The guy went, boom, he had to slap you. Like you slap your children. Yes. Why did you write on the wall? Sometimes God has to give you a smack. Yeah, come on, let's go. So it, the smack was there. And that's what she realized that, wow, this was a message from God. Bizarre, I mean, to be, you know, you want to see some kind of a sign, God coming God. You should do this. I, God here's is a not sign. Here's yeah. a sign. And God will hit you harder the 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 more difficult it is for you, or um, you know you have student or uh, children who are stubborn. The more stubborn they are, they are the harder 
God is going to smack you. Ooh, yes. Well, okay? yeah. Just keep that in mind. So if you're someone who's paying attention to your surrounding, to the clues, to the events, and then you're doing a daily accounting to see if you did the right thing, if you follow within the 10th commandments, if you're following, you know, you're leading your life by that, that's the blueprint, then you can go back and say, well, you know what? I made a mistake in this area. Let me correct. Blueprint, yeah. That is a foundation. I mean, learn that. We always talk about the Ten Commandments, and maybe you're tired of hearing those words, but just read the Ten Commandments. Understand the Ten Commandments. Follow that, and that's your basis, foundation, guide, blueprint. And it says, look at the past to understand why this is happening. A way to bring to bring out. Now, again, these these events that's happening, why bad things are happening, it's also a way for God to bring out qualities of resilience, resilience, courage, character building, and also for you to connect back to God, okay? He wants you to connect, reconnect with him, because most likely you disconnected, you distance. What parent that doesn't want to be connected to their child? If you're a parent, you haven't spoken to your child many, many years I've passed, I'm sure you don't feel good about that. No, absolutely. I, there is no way you can be happy about upsetting. that. Upsetting. It is a, yeah, it has to be upsetting. But see, God is not going to just sit there and let you be disconnected with him. No, right. He's not going to sit there right. and just be right. idle oh, yes. and let you be disconnected. He's going to hit you. You don't listen? Harder. You don't listen? Harder and harder and harder. He's going to keep getting harder and harder until you said, what is it, God? Yeah. What is it you're trying to tell me? The question is, how hard do you want to be hit? That's the question. How hard do you want to be hit before you turn around? And some people get hit pretty hard. Yes. And some people get hit so hard, God says, you know what? I'm taking you out of this world. I'm bringing you upstairs. Well, on a job, you get fired then. Yeah. Or you also get tell you, look, you made a mistake. This is how you correct it. And you don't want to lose your job. You don't want to lose your life. So you better do what God's saying. And it's not that hard, really. I mean, what's so hard about it? And it's not to focus too much on the past mistakes, mishap, or deeds, past deeds. But a focus on God giving you a trans, um, transformative, 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 transformation, opportunity to change, to become great. Otherwise, it would not exist. I mean, that God is giving you an opportunity to transform yourself into uh uh, to an awesome human being. Because again, as we discussed, the point of being here is for you to work on you becoming the greatest being you can possibly be. Because the purpose of this creation is to fix you. That's the purpose of this creation. You have to fix you. And the greatest gift, you have to work on the greatest gift God has given you. Don't wish to be this, that, or that. Whatever your gift and whatever you're doing at the time, do the best. And that will elevate you to if you have to make a change. Whatever you're doing, if you're a waitress, a waiter, you know, and maybe you say, okay, I want to, but do the best you can so people can see. He's got great character. I think I'll hire him to do the manager now or boss or CEO or whatever you are. Just do the best you can at, what, at, at your qualities. And that is true. If you're on a job and you have outstanding characteristic, um, it's called me dot character, and then the boss recognize your character, Guess what? He's going to want to promote you. Why? Absolutely. Because you're a beautiful human being. He's like, wow, everybody's in here, everybody's in here is garbage, but you, you're perfect. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is garbage, but you're perfect. Why? Because you worked on your character traits. You worked on your flaws and became, you less angry, you less upset, you less jealous, you less cheap. You became a better person, a better husband, a better father, a better neighbor, a better friend, because you're working on refining these flaws that's in you. That's what you're doing. Wow, That's the yes, purpose absolutely. You're here to, ref um, to refine those flaws. Now, it says as well, the next one is, uh, number four, is to keep you from going to hell. Why is God allowing these bad things to happen? Because, again, meaning that you're on, a road, on the wrong road, you're sinning. You're sinning, and you don't know it because why you did not learn to know you're sinning. So, if you are sinning, you keep sinning, then God says, if you die or I have to kill you, the Satan come and hold a case against you and have to kill you, you're going to hell. But that's not God's plan. He doesn't want anyone to go to hell. This is, it's called a corrective action plan. He wants to correct you. So that way you don't go to hell. Okay? So he brings this um, suffering on you here. 
because this suffering will only last a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Let's say you fell down and bumped your head. Okay, you bump your head, it lasts for a couple of weeks, and it goes away. Or you can go to hell for a couple of thousand years. Right, right. You see what God is dealing with? God says, I can have you suffer for a couple of weeks by hitting your head, falling on the floor, and you have a bruised eyes, a bruised head for a couple of weeks, two or three months, or you die, you go to hell for a couple of thousand years. Forever. Or forever. So God says, this is because you don't understand the way God works this world. We're not going to understand everything. But he says, this is the better punishment. This is the better correction is for you to fall and bump your head and then you suffer for a couple of weeks of pain, whatever that you and go And sin through. can be corrected. As long as you re, uh, repent, uh, ask forgiveness from God, whatever the sin is in your past, let it go, but learn from it. If you don't learn from it, you're not letting it go and you'll repeat it. You got to learn from the sin. Ask God for forgiveness. Ask yourself for forgiveness. Learn from it. I won't do that again. And we are, and God will never give us too much that we cannot handle. No, correct. That's another. He will never give you uh, too much um, burden that you can't deal with. He gives it to you because he knows you can deal with it. He knows you can do it. You don't know you can't do it. But God knows you can do it. And again, it's to build you up. Everything God does is for the good. Everything is good. Your character. Everything is good. Right. There is nothing God does that's bad. You know, it's through your perspective. It's through your lack of understanding and knowledge because you don't know what you don't know is why you think this is bad. If you understood, you would not see it as being bad. Because think about it. If you want to understand a little bit how God is, would you do anything to hurt your son or your daughter? No, no. It's not even possible unless you're an evil parent. Unless you're an evil parent. But whether you punish them, you take away the television, you don't give them money, they cannot go to the movies, they cannot hang with their friends, you know very well as a parent, you're not hurting them. Okay, you're doing what is good for them. That's what it is. So if you want to understand that, you have to look at it through the eyes of you as a parent that you would never do anything to hurt your child. And we think that the pain is always just on us. We look at other people. Why don't they have pain? Well, first of all, Everybody doesn't tell everybody their pain. You remember meeting someone in the store? Hey, how are you doing? Most people aren't going to say in the store, Oh, yeah, I got this pain. I got this. Pain. Oh, I'm fine. I'm doing great. It's always a, what's that word? Facade? No, facade. Or just a, a front. I'm going to put on. Yeah, I'm doing great. I'm doing real good. And then they're going bankrupt because they're embarrassed. They did something that they didn't learn. And that is true. No, Everybody puts a face on that everything's okay. My husband is cheating on me, and I know he's cheating on me. But I'm going to put that face. Oh, everything is fine. fine everything is good. Right. But yet, this woman is being tortured inside. She's screaming for help. But yet, she can't reveal that to you. Because why? She has to put that face that everything is okay. So when you see people, and we have met people like that, thinking they're okay, they're not okay. And it's all, it's all walks of life. Yes. You, just because you see somebody that's a billionaire or driving a uh, Mercedes... Like I remember my dad, I think we were driving in the car and we saw someone. He goes, look at that guy. He look, he thinks he's so rich. I go, Dad, what's your payment on your car? $79? What's his payment? $800? I mean, he's got a burden to pay for that. We all have some. And then, well, going back with pain, I mean, everybody goes through pain. Very. I mean, how many and, people in the world can say, I never had any pain. In this world, if you live in this world, you're alive, you're going to know pain. Physical and mental. Yes, you're going to know it or both. both. Yes, you're going to know pain if you're in this world. If you have not experienced it yet, it's coming. Because the purpose of this world is to struggle to work on you to be better. You did not come here as an angel. You came here with flaws. So if there's flaws, that means pain will suffer to correct those flaws. Well, Victor, you look like a guy sitting there. You never saw any pain. Oh, I seen pain. Have you? Nah, you didn't I see seen it. pain. Uh, oh, a little bit of Torah. This. Hey, the Torah uh -huh. brought me. The Torah brought we me. We have pain. To right, yes. right. You know, I seen did you pain. learn from it? Or are oh, you learning I'm still learning. There you go. I'm That's, still learning. You gotta keep learning. I'm still learning. And it gets better. Yes. And the thing is, as I learn more and more, and you're right, it gets better. Then you start to recognize like the pain. Hey, this is good for me. Because I would yes, not have seen yes, it this way. Yes, yes. Pain will make you see things in a different way. Suffering will make you see your situation in a different way that you could not have seen otherwise. 
You see that? And I'm sure Very all good. of you understand what I'm right, talking about. Right, right. That's what it does. It opens your eyes to other things that was concealed to you. And now it's no longer concealed anymore because why? That pain has forced you to go to the next level. And it's nobody's fault. I mean, we can always blame somebody. Well, oh, look what they did or whatever. You make, uh, I'm going to say it again. You make your bed, you're lying. You got to know the rules. Okay, you make mistakes, bounce back. That's how you learn, really. Tough part, what is that called? Tough love sometimes. Tough love, yes. God has to give us tough love sometimes. Why? Because we're hard at it. But again, the purpose of this world is, again, as we mentioned many times, is to fix you. You are the project. You are the goal. You are the purpose. You are why you are here for. You are here to fix you and to recognize your creator. One, that is the purpose. One simple an mm -hmm. analogy. Bear with me here. You know, I've been in construction, and many times I've had a hammer and hit my hit my thumb. Well, you got to learn from that. That pain is terrible. Well, any pain is terrible. I mean, but am I going to put my hand and I, you have to be ah? You mean that you learn from the first mistake, right? For it not mean, to happen again. Yes. In any situation, we were talking about driving down the street, speeding, you get a ticket. I mean, if you keep speeding, you're going to kill someone, if not yourself, your child. What about a... Well, yes. it just goes on and on. You have to learn, and it's not that hard. Just get down and... Well, again, it's not... Again, it takes time to learn. Yeah, I always say you know, it's and, easy. And, well, I mean... Joe's saying it's easy. Don't pay attention to Joe. I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why Joe's saying it's easy. <laughs> Because Joe been learning for 30 uh, years. I hit my hand a yeah. million times. I better learn. He's been learning for 30 <laughs> years. That's the difference between Joe and you. 80, yeah. I'm almost 80. So but 80, still, yeah, you've been learning you for 30 years. 30 right. years of learning, being in the desert. And that's why I said what I mentioned before. Every man needs to be like Joe. If you were in your 50s or below that, you should start learning about the Word of God, refining yourself. So by the time you reach this age, you'll be like an angel. But again... The reason why he can say that is because he's been learning. I don't, hit my, I don't hit my thumb anymore. There you go. It's not I that he learned that. <laughs> it's not like he woke up yesterday and said, hey, it's easy. No, he's been learning. Just like I'm still learning and he's still learning. You see, we're both still learning. And the more we learn, it does get easier. Yeah, there you it go. Does right. get it does get easier, easier the more you learn. There Which is, is correct. I say it wrong. You put it in a great perspective. Well, because you're, you're, yeah. you're achieving. You're reaching uh, it. Yes. That's why. So, you know, people can't understand that. But again, the more you learn, the easier it becomes. Now, there's a story I want to talk to you about so you can see about, you know, pain and then what's going on. This story is about this woman who saved money for at least 15 years. She was saving here and there every chance she got to save because she wanted to open an antique store. That was her dream. Mm, she like wanted that. to own yeah. her own business. So it took her 15 years to save that money. So she finally opened the shop, and overnight, a week into the business operation, there's an electrical shortage, oh boy. and the business burned down, okay? So the whole store burned down. Now, her friends, of course, can you imagine 15 years saving money to open this business, and then after a week of open, it burns down? Now your friends come to you and says, hey, friends come to you, and they say to her, Look at the bright side. You have your health, your children, your husband. You have so much to be grateful. Now, even though that may be true, but at that moment, that doesn't really help, does it? Right. No, it doesn't. It doesn't help. It may be true, but it doesn't help. Because you what you've done, you are minimizing her pain. She has a lot of pain because it took her 15 years to save to get this business going on. And now you as a friend or so-called friend did not see or understand. And what we're saying is that you need to understand we must have sympathy and compassion for people who are going through a difficult time. So when these people are going through these tests, we have to be sympathized to them. We have to have sympathy for them, compassion, understanding. Don't minimize their pain. I do that a lot. I do. I've said that to many people. I go, you know, look at... Uh... You lost material things, but look at your children, your health. So that is important, but Victor's right. You got to be more sensitive to the situation. Yes, because right now they are hurting. They don't, need a, they don't need a speech from you. They don't need a speech. They need your sympathy, understanding, because they may not be at the level you are now. 
And let me ask you a question. What if it happened to you? Would yeah. you would you want me to say that to uh, you? No, probably not. Yeah, you wouldn't want to hear me say that to you if it happened no, to you. No, right. But it's okay to say it to her. Well, it's very hard to say anything to someone when they're in uh, dire straits. There you go. What do you go. say? How do you say it? You don't give does, a speech. You don't you, give a speech. No, right. Sometimes you can just go there and sit next to them like Joe and I sitting and just be silent. Or what can I say? Just what be silent. I, no, don't say nothing. Right, well, right. Yeah, it said don't say nothing. It says right. if... You don't know what to say. Don't say nothing. Not just, oh, that's true. Just let them talk. Because why? They're venting. They're venting. And you go, yes, I understand. You know? Or if you can help them in any way or ask them if there's any way I can help you. But yes. think that's right. Don't say anything unless it's productive. Exactly. Yeah. And sometimes it's not at the... And some, most of the time, it's not the appropriate time to say anything. Because right now, they just want to vent. They want to tell someone of their pain. Yes. And their sorrow. yes. So what they're looking for is someone to listen. Mm -hmm. That's what they're looking for. Someone to listen. Not to judge, not to give a speech, not to encourage, just to listen. Yeah, I've been on that end too, yeah. right. Just yeah. to listen. Just to listen. And then because why they're going through these challenges, and then again, we don't know how we would react if we were going through it. But at the same time, you have to think about it. Would you want to hear what they're telling you if that were you? Mm -hmm. And most of the time, it would, the answer would probably be not. So, you know, we have to understand. And the other thing that we have... Another story tied to that to show you, again, it's always tied to the Bible, is let's look at Job. Job. Everybody heard, uh, if you read the Bible, you know about Job. Job. Where, Job. Yeah, Job. 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 They call him Job. Okay. So Job was actually Abraham's nephew. And then when God says to Abraham that that's it for you, there's no more test, there's someone else going to pick up your test. He was talking about to Abraham's nephew, Job. Job became the one who picked up the test the rest of the test that Abraham had. And then remember, his test was he lost his house, he lost his wealth, he lost his children, he lost everything, even his health, he Is lost. Abraham? No, oh, Job. 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 Okay, Job. Okay. Yeah, he lost everything. everything. Imagine right now, wherever you are, ladies and gentlemen, if you listen to this, imagine you lost everything, your family, everything, your money, your wealth, your house, and then you're full of disease, you have pus and worm coming out of your skin. Mm. You're sitting on the side of the road. Everybody's scared to come near you because you look like you got plague. Mm -hmm. You have the plague. And then all you have is your wife or your spouse with you. That's all you have left in the world. And now, your friends who knew you when you were rich, you were beautiful, you were talented, you were smart, and they come to you. What did you do? You must have did something to God. Listen to what they're saying. You must have did something wrong for God to do this to you. Did you examine yourself? Now, is that the appropriate time to tell someone this? No. No. Look at his suffering. Instead of being a friend and said, here, here's a blanket. Here's a room. Yeah. Here's food. You can here's help this. Them. Right. Help them through this difficult time. But yet, these friends are not friends. Now, sometimes they may think because they don't know they're doing your favor. To, because why? If you look at it, it's both sides. Because one they're saying is what they're saying um, is that, listen, you did something wrong, and God is trying to get your attention. Try to understand what you did wrong. Fix it so God can give it back to you. So that's one way of looking at it. That's what they're trying to say. But on the other side that you're not looking at is he's in pain right now. He's in pain. He's suffering. Mm -hmm. He needs immediate relief. Mm -hmm. He needed not a speech right now. He needs immediate relief. First, you give him immediate relief. You feed him. You close him. You give him uh, medical comfort. attention. You give him comfort. comfort. After he starts to recover, then you say, hey, then you can probably bring this up mm -hmm. to him. Now he knows how to fix his life. And this is what this is, these lessons are about. How to fix, how to approach things. Because every situation you can possibly imagine, God already told us how to behave in that. And one thing, we're always impatient. And that's one of the words that we got to understand that it takes time to be where you want to be. Mm -hmm. We are impatient. I mean, we want this thing now. We want that car now. We want that house now. We want that marriage now. But it takes time. Yes. It takes time because, remember, you have to trust in God because God is running this world. He's running your life. Okay? You're not running your own life. Because if you were running your own life, I guarantee you this much. You would have, if everything would be done exactly how you want it the day you were born. The day you were born, everything you want, you wish, you would went after it and got it, and it would be exactly like that. Who do you know have a life like that? No, nobody. It'd be nobody. boring. Nobody has a life challenge. Like that. Right. Yeah, nobody has a life like that. That is exactly 
everything I want happen exactly the way I want it to happen perfectly. And I and on top of that, I have no suffering in my life. Who lives like that? If you have parents, they die, you're gonna suffer. You have children, they're gonna do things, you're gonna suffer. You have a physical body, you're gonna have pain, you're gonna suffer. You may not have it now, but later it could be. We don't know, but we live in a world of pain and suffering. And sometimes people, uh, younger children will grow up being like, we heard the word spoiled. Mm -hmm. So when they do, the parents give them everything, everything, and then when they go on their own, they're lost. They don't know how to get what they need. Yes. And now what happened too is this, you got to look at it again. It's again, you're going back to the teaching and this is what we're doing. You gain this information, now you teach your kids by verbal or by example. Yeah, because exactly. you're I love the example. Right. Yeah, by example, by the way you conduct your life. Now it says now the wife was, you know, said, look, why don't, why do you still serve this God? Why are you not angry at God? Why don't you just be angry at God and die? Mm -hmm. Get it over with. But because Job understood, he understood the purpose in this life. That's the difference. When you understand your purpose, when you understand the purpose of this ah, life, your purpose, right? Why you here? You look at the whole world in a different type of lens. You're not looking at it like everybody else because you understand why am I here? That's why you're here for 60, 70, 80, 90 years. That's why you're growing old. That's why you have gray hair. That's why you were 30 once. Now you're 40. Now you're 50. You're 60. Why are you aging? Because it means time is running out. It means you need to finish what you were sent here to do, and that's to fix you. The clock is ticking. God gave you X amount of years to fix you. There you go, right. That's what this is about. Right. And he helps you by bringing these problems in your life. He's assisting you. He's giving you a boost. He said, hey, you forgot why you're here. You know what? Let me wake you up. And gave you the blueprint. Yeah, let me wake you up. Let me give you a smack to right. wake you up. Hey, you're not here to go lay on the beach. No, right. You got a productive uh, role yeah. to perform. You're not here. You're not like a gorilla. You eat bananas all day, lay in, you know, yeah, bathe in the sun, yeah. climb trees and go to sleep and procreate. Yeah. You're not a gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not why you're here. You have a soul and you're going to go back upstairs and give your accountants, meaning that you're going to have to be uh, accountable for your action here. What you do here is going to be in the court in heaven. They're going to take you apart piece by piece and inspect Every moment, every second of your life is going to be dissected in heaven. I want you to understand that. So that's why I say it's important for you to understand how you behave here, how important it is. Now, next one is that problem is how other people try, you know, they try to tell you like the, the friends of um, Job. We suffer because of our sin. And God is speaking to us through these events in our lives. Now, um, men's now, the, uh, and I'm, I'm King Solomon says this, men sin because they do not learn. They chose not to learn, and then now they sin because they do not know, and when they commit the sin and they get punished for it, now they want to blame God. That's men. Men do things that goes against God, and when God punishes them, they want to blame God, says, God, why are you punishing me? Mm -hmm. It's like a kid, your son come to you, you tell him, don't touch that stove, and he touches, he get burned, and then you punish him, and he says, why are you punishing me? Mm -hmm. Now, would you, how would you feel if your son said, why are you punish me? punishing me after you told your son not to do it? What would be your answer, Joe? Well, you got to teach him again. You got to understand why, you know, why didn't he learn at that point? I mean, I'm sure when he sees the red hat, he'll learn from experience. But there has to be some consequences to deter him well, to do it the second time. Right. For one reason, why he has, hasn't learned, you have to yeah, either punish or... And there it says in this world, there's a time to suffer, a time to grieve, and a time to rejoice. You see? So there's different seasons for these things. You know, God can give you a sense of joy in that suffering. Okay? In that suffering. Because that's what Job had. He had a sense of joy and understanding in that suffering. He wasn't, because if he did not, he would say, I'm done with this. I'm done with God. You know, I give up. I'm going my separate way. God, you go your way, I'm going to go my way. Mm -hmm. He could have said that, but Job stood there. So did Abraham, because there's a joy, because they understand, I'm serving my God. My God is putting these challenges before me. For example, like if my father is training me, let's say my father is training me to be a fast runner, right? And then we go to the we go to the track. track. Mm -hmm. We go to the track. And my, my father say, run more. Oh, I can't, Dad, more. One more mile. No, Dad, I can't. I can't. One more mile. 
and then my dad is pushing me. Now, I don't want to go one more mile. I may be getting upset at my dad, but am I going to really be upset and hate him? Because I understand what he's trying to do, because my dad said, hey. He sees the quality in you in the uh, performance that you can achieve. And he said to me, you're going to be the next Olympic winner. Ah, yeah. Because that's the goal. I know the goal. Okay, yeah. Because I know the goal, and I know my father loved me, so I understand why this difficult time in between is pushing me, because I understand what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. The purpose is to win this gold medal, and the purpose is I'm going to win it. I can win it. But my dad sees my potential in me, and he's pushing me. Even though that hurts me, I want to get upset or get mad, but I don't. Why? Because I know my dad loved me. He wants to see me win the gold medal. He wants to see me win the and gold medal. And we have to also see that with the teacher. When a teacher puts pressure on you, or a boss, you can't be mad at the boss or your teacher. Oh, they don't understand. If they want you to do it, your best performance. Yes. And you know what? It says, why God... We were talking about this um, earlier, just to throw this in there, um, about why God made someone beautiful, and you were saying about someone who she was afraid to lose weight. Yeah, there was a person that was uh, overweight, and... Uh, you know, we were talking about, you know, losing the weight, but she was afraid because of her beauty. She was very beautiful that, and she was married, so she was afraid if she lost the weight, she would get this all attention from men, and she would have to fight that. And you know what? That is a smart, 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 smart woman. Because the Torah says, put a fence around you, meaning that do something that will keep you from crossing the line. And that's what she's doing. She said, you know what? If I lose this weight, I'm going to get all these men coming out after me. I don't know if I'll be able to turn them down. Well, not to encourage you shouldn't lose weight right. and be healthy. That's well, the main point. you got to be healthy. Yes. But the, the principle of that is there that you, go. you have to more have more confidence in yourself and Lord. But that could be scary. Behind that, like Joe said, adding to that, you know, the Torah. The Torah, what I'm referring to, a fence. Okay, meaning that a protection, a guard to keep you from sinning. The armor. Too, yeah, the armor. the armor. There you right. go. Okay. And that's what she's done. She's ah. putting an armor to keep her from sinning. Not that she doesn't want to lose the weight, but she's looking at either I lose the weight or I can fall into sin. Which one is greater, sin or losing the weight? You see, so she weighed her situation and she realized, you know what? I don't want to sin. I don't want to lose my marriage. I don't want to lose my children. I don't want to defile my husband and my kids or shame my husband, shame my kids, shame my mother, shame my father, shame my family because I'm adulterous. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm safe where I am. So I'm not going to invite a test into my life. Ooh, good. I like that analogy. Yes. Very I'm good. not going to invite a test into my life. And that's what the Torah says. Do not invite any test. Don't put yourself in a situation where you going to be tested, and most likely you're going to fail. That's why it says don't do it. You're going to fail because the Satan is brilliant. Now, now being, be, you got to be confident in your mind and your body. You have to be feel very confident in yourself and know that even if you do lose that weight, that you have the respect of, for yourself and the integrity that you won't cross that line. There's a beautiful story. Uh, it's a, I believe it's not a Jewish um, story or parable about this woman who she um, was talking about her disabled son and she got married and you know everyone who gets married they dream about having the perfect child healthy children you know no complication smart intelligent but her child ended up being disabled and she's talking about the struggle having to deal with this disabled child and she used a story a parable about a traveler and she says there was this woman that saved for 12 years, she saved money, little by little, for 12 years, because her dream was to go to Italy. So she saved the money, she got on the boat, but something went wrong, and the boat went to Holland instead of Italy. And she was heartbroken, because she didn't have money to pay to go to Italy. So she she was so heartbroken that she, was, she went back home, she just was devastated, because why? She believed she didn't get to see what she wanted, what she saved up for 12 years to see Italy. Now, the story goes like this. Now, because that she did not get to see 
where she wanted to go. She was really, really disappointed about her life, okay? And the story is really attached to, even though Italy is beautiful, but she went to Holland, there's beautiful, they could have been the beach, the sunset, you know, the waterfalls, all these things she could have probably enjoyed more in Holland than Italy, but she never paid attention to it. She never paid attention to she it. She got caught up in because where she wanted to go yes. and not where she is. And that's true. I like that analogy. And that's what you got to accept where you are in life and work towards those goals. Exactly. What was that? She was so consumed, but with Italy, she didn't even pay attention to Holland at oh, all. Right. And she, she was a loss for her. And then what she's doing, she's attaching it to this. She's attaching it to her son who's disabled. Now, because she wanted, she wanted this perfect son, but she got this disabled son that she could not enjoy this son that you know, she's maybe in. God sent her to Holland to meet a doctor. If she got into involved with enjoying Holland, she could have met a doctor that could have saved or helped her son. So she kind of like missed out because she was so upset. You, you see where I'm going? Yes, with this? again, God missed sent opportunity. Her to, God sent her to Holland. Yeah, missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. Right. Could have find someone to save, but she missed out on that. And that's what he's saying that. She now she has this disabled child. She's talking about how she struggled with disabled child because what's what are we really saying here is this is that and we'll share a story about Joe. Um, is that what happened is because you have this child now, this is what you were given, this is what you were given, and that's not what you wanted. And because you didn't want this, you cannot enjoy this child, you cannot enjoy what you have. And the story goes like this. No one gets in life what they want, but be happy with what you, you have. have. This is what you have. Because who's to say what you wanted would be better than what you have? Because again, most, God gave it to you. Most, so you know better than God? Most, no, you don't. But most people get absolved, involved with what they don't have and they don't appreciate what they do have. And therefore, it's like we talk about you going on a trip from point A to point B. All you paying attention to is the destination, but you never enjoy right. the ride there. You never enjoy the sights, the scenery. You you didn't enjoy the food, the you know the hotels, the the restaurants, you know the people. You you completely blind yourself to the to the to the um, to the route, the destination. Right. All you were focused on focusing on is that destination. So you didn't really enjoy yourself, and that's what life. And that's the that's what we're trying to say here. Everyone is focusing at something at the end, but you're not enjoying the life you have right now. Well, we're always thinking, like you just said, we're looking at the future, and the future is never here because you're always now. Yes. You're always in the present, and you have to enjoy every minute because you don't know when it's going to end. You have to enjoy every yeah, minute. Beautiful. You can think about the future and go, oh, I'd like to go there, but enjoy what you have now. Seize the moment. Seize the moment. Seize the moment because all you really have is the moment. We always planning 20, 30 years from now thinking we're going to be around. Who's to say you're going to be alive? No, yeah, exactly. that's it. Yeah. And if you're alive, who's to say you're going to be capable of doing it? Who's to say you're going to have it? Who's to say you're going to be able to walk on two legs to do what you want to do? If you wanted to dream about eating a steak, but you're eating a hamburger, why complain? Enjoy that hamburger. And the thing is this, if this is the life you were given, God gave you, that means this is the best life for you. Seize the moment, enjoy the, the moment. ride, enjoy the ride you're given, enjoy the people you're given. Of course, we're not saying that you have a horrible man, a horrible right. woman. No, no, That's right. not what we're talking about. I'm just using the example of this child, you know, this, this child and then this um, missed opportunity that we don't see or you're going from point A to point B, but you're not enjoying the ride. You're not enjoying the ride at all. You get there, you're miserable. You're steaming, smoke coming out of your ears. By that time you arrived, you already got three horns came out of your head because you're so angry. So you can't even you can't even enjoy it when you get to the destination either. I think, I think I mentioned this in a video. I remember I had a date. I think it was like 19 or so, and uh, picked her my date up. We went to the park, and I thought it was going to be a beautiful day, but it was raining, and I got upset. At that moment, I'm thinking, now well, here we are in the car, in the park, and we're carrying on this beautiful conversation. And it was one of the best dates and 
that I've ever had just because of, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, I could have ruined it and been, oh, let's go home. Oh, I wanted to swing on the swings or walk in the park, but no, it was raining. But you got to take advantage. When they say, what's that saying? If God gives you lemons, make lemonade or what? How's that saying go? Well, it sounds good to me. Yes, whatever you have, make the best of it. Yeah, make, that's well, what you're saying. No, oh, you know, I wanted this. No, I don't want to go to this movie. I wanted to go. I don't have this car. Enjoy what you have. Yes, enjoy what you have. Enjoy the moment. Seize the moment. The moment. Seize the moment. Because you'll never get it back. It doesn't mean you'll be here tomorrow. Look at the times you looked in the past. Oh, why didn't I do this? I should have did this. But enjoy where you are now. If you have not done so, start this moment. Start enjoying now what you have. Be appreciated. Be thankful for what you have. And keep moving forward. Because again, this is a life is not what you think it is. It's a life where you have to fix yourself. And the more you fix yourself, the easier it's going to be to enjoy your current situation. To enjoy the now. If you cannot fix yourself, you cannot enjoy the now. You have to work on yourself to be able to enjoy the now. And the now is much more beautiful than you can ever possibly imagine for yourself. Because why? It was a decision God made for you. Your decision will never be equal or even come close to God's decision. It just simply doesn't exist. So if God gave you this life, it took me a while, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to tell you, I'm still learning to enjoy the now. Don't think I've conquered it. I'm still learning because, again, it's a long process of learning. It, it's an education, restructuring my mindset the way I think. But I can see the beauty in the now. I know I can understand the now because the now makes sense because the past is gone. The future is not here. All we have is now. Like Joe and I, I'm enjoying this teaching, this lesson with Joe. Why? Because it's in the now. It's in the now. And at least yeah. I know I enjoy this now with Joe teaching this moment. I'm enjoying it. We're enjoying it. You see? So the more I enjoy the now, the less regret I will have of my life. Now, if we're thinking I will about not my life. If we want to start thinking about the future, ooh, if we keep this on, we're going to be on TV, and then now we're going to get a million dollars. We're thinking the future, which is wrong. you got to concentrate on right now. Look at the beauty. Look at that we're learning. Yes. And again, like we, what Joe said, who has, I have stated as well, the more you learn, the more you will learn the now, to live in the now, to yeah. enjoy the present. Okay? It's going to take learning for you to be able to do that. Trying to tell yourself, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it, it will not work. Because why? There's going to be issues and challenges that's going to, Knock your self-esteem back down again. And then, again, that doesn't work. But when you learn why you hear your purpose and join the now, because there's no, you don't know what tomorrow is. The past is gone. You can't change it. The future is not yours. But the now is what you have. Then appreciate the now. If you have a family, love your family now. Love the people who are good to you now. Spend that time with them now. Show them how much you care and love them. Because... You don't know if tomorrow will be a tomorrow for you. Right. You don't right. know if there's going to be a tomorrow right. for you. No, we don't. And you don't want to live a life, live a life of regret. Because why? I didn't enjoy my husband. I didn't enjoy my child. Because I was so consumed running in the future, living in the future, I never enjoyed my family. That's what happens. You get robbed of that. You live do. in the now. Right. Right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank uh, you for joining us. Anything you want to add, Joe, before we conclude? No, I think we're done. Well, God bless you all. Keep sharing. Keep learning. Again, again, what we said, the conversation never ends. It's endless. You have so much to learn and so much to teach other people. Share with everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Co-workers, everyone you can think of, everybody who has a cell phone, exactly. send them the link. Why? They need to hear this. They need to learn themselves. And you're doing a great um, blessing for these people by sharing these videos with them. And don't forget, get that bell out. And the ring that bell. Ring that bell. Ring Have that a good bell. day, ladies and gentlemen. Ring that bell. <laughs>